Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. And I'm Justin. And Doug, where was your most unforgettable vacation? I'm so glad you asked this, Justin, because I've, I've, in this moment, I've had this moment to really think about mm. where I've gone, where I've been, things that I've done. And Macon, Missouri has to be the coolest place. Just kidding. A place is whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I was just uh, saying, tell, you have my attention. Now tell I'm me more. listening. What's in Macon, Missouri? <laughs> Uh, or Versailles, Missouri. Um, no, I went Versailles. to, uh, I think it was shortly after college, my mom took Jill and I on a cruise, a European cruise. We started in Venice. We were there for a couple days, which was awesome. And then we left Venice. We went to Croatia. And then we nice. went to Greece, which was Shit. super fun. Greece is like, I'm a huge like <gasps> Greek history, Greek mythology, that pantheon of stuff. I absolutely love it. And... Shit's just really old there. Like it's 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 aged in a way that as an American who's like, This is two hundred years old, you're like, Holy shit and they're like, Hey, this is this whole like little village area, it it dates back to one thousand BC. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? How far back? They That's had really they had baths. They had baths back then. Like they had like, Yeah, this is the area where they bathed and it was like tile and shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, that's wild, man. it's crazy. Yeah. I like you just you're trying to wrap your head around something that's that <clears throat> old. It's just it's well, really there's difficult. A, there's a difference between hearing about it, learning about it and then standing in it. And you're yeah. like, fuck, like I can I'm I'm physically next to this thing. that was 1000. Be- like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, when I was in college, I did a like a, a trimester abroad and we were in uh, England and we were looking at a, at like a wall like it's that's still standing that was from the year 1000 AD and I even then I was like part of me was like we drove all the way out here to look at this fucking wall like whatever but someone's like yeah this is from the year 1000 I'm like that's pretty cool like yeah just to look at this thing is like this is still here after right. a thousand years it is still standing and you're like Oh, like even then, look at buildings in England, you know, I'm like, this shit's old, man. Like going to the Globe mm-hmm. Theater, I'm like, this is the same place <laughs> where Shakespeare debuted his summer blockbusters, you know, like. Right, right, right. Literally, we were groundling standing in the pit watching Midsummer Night's Dream, like for a play. Like it was, it was wild. Um, yeah. And it's just, just understanding like. The idea that this existed hundreds of years ago, it's just, it, it, it blows your mind. As Americans, we lack the idea of that amount of time just because our country is so new and we can't really look at anything that's really well, man made yeah, that's tr- really that, that astonishing. Try to imagine anything that's built now lasting, you know, whatever, a thousand years, lasting, no. like, lasting 500 years, like, like, no. let's 200 years. Like, it's it just, it doesn't, I just feel like. There's we don't have and I could be wrong. I don't don't fucking know anything from anything, but I just feel like we don't have the same kind of like that was just true craftsmanship, man. Like Well, I, I think I've read some stuff that if there were to be some sort of zombie apocalypse sort of situation, you know, where society sort of fell down that um Yeah. It would just it would be detrimental to the environment. Um not because of the zombies, but because like, for example, nuclear reactors. Um those have to oh, be yeah. maintained. And right. if they are not maintained, they have nuclear fallouts and it just destroys everything around them. It's like, if you think about where those are, you're fucked. You're right. Like, you're, yeah. you're not going to. And then also just buildings in general, they just, I mean, d- dark subjects, but, you know, the Baltimore Bridge. I mean, to be fair, that bridge was not built to withstand a 900 foot ship crashing into it. Okay. Fair point. I don't, I don't think most bridges are, but like bridges in California were built to withstand earthquakes with that right. in mind. They have sensors built into them. And and even I think I think Golden Gate Bridge was built in the 30s and probably needs to get updated big time. But in general, like a lot of these things, like that bridge, I mean, the water's filled with minerals. It breaks down the material. Over mm-hmm. time, it becomes weaker. And it's just, they, they just don't, whatever. You look at skyscrapers and shit like that. The way that stuff is built, I just, 
things are made now. Like the invention of concrete back in like Julius Caesar's time was huge because mm-hmm. it allowed them instead of chipping away at rock, they could pour stuff and build it quicker. Right. But chipping something out of rock, it's more foundation. I, listen to me. I'm not a fucking architect. I'm, I was not, gonna, a, I'm not a structural tell, engineer. Y'all. Educate me, Doug. Yeah. But I imagine if you chip something out of a standing rock, that's probably going to be a lot more. <laughs> just like we're going to pour it into a frame and it's going to stay there probably for a while. But over time, the composition of that is going to break down. And unless yeah. you maintain it, it will fall apart over time. So all that to say that, yeah, I can't imagine the fucking Sears Tower existing for 500 years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Well, I mean, now they've got, what is it, the bioconcrete? It's the self-healing. The, they've got people developing mm. self-healing concrete. Smart. Using bacteria or fungus or whatever it is. But, uh, you know, like, okay, Moving forward, maybe we're going to solve for that. But anything from like one point, like point A to point, you know, D, good luck. Most of the shit that we've built, especially like from the 70s, it's not good. It was, it's not good now. Like it's built, it's built for then. Or it's built for like what we are building now is built for now. Yeah. And we're not thinking this, this will be, (laughs) this will be a structure that our, uh, you know, historians look back on our civilization. 50 years from now, we'll be like, God, this was built in the 2020s, man. We got to update this shit. You know, like it doesn't have the self healing biomes attached to it. You know, like, (laughs) Oh God. Yeah. So anyway, Justin, what's one of the coolest places you've ever been? (laughs) I, (laughs) I would say, uh, our Beth's and my trip up to Alberta, Canada, Ah. Uh, the Lake Louise area, the um, Jasper area, that was all just, it was stunning. It was, I think when I got back, I think I described it to you as um, monotonously beautiful. Every single, like everywhere you turned, it was just more beautiful than the last place that you had looked. And it it started to get to the point where you're just like, how much more beauty can there be? <laughs> like, it's just, it's everywhere up there. I've never seen a place that was so pristine or stunning. I imagine so. that's the thing that's sad about that is if you were to live there, eventually you'd get used to how beautiful it is. And Absolutely. That is a, that's a yeah. fucking fact. And that is a sad fact of life is that it is, we yeah. get complacent. And yeah. that's why when Natalie's been like, I wish we could live in Florida. I'm like, well, there's a lot of problems with that statement. Um, but <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Like, she's right. like, I wish we could live in Disney World. I'm like, you say that. But right. It's one of those places where it took me a while to realize that, like, yeah. Like, at one point, I'm like, I would love to work in Disney World. I was like, yeah. But back in my mind, I'm like, but would you? Would, would it become you? corrupt over time? Like, this idea of this place that you think is magical, but then you work there and you deal with asshats to the right. point where, like, it ruins. Like, you can't step foot in there and enjoy it because you have to deal with fucking idiots all the time. So, it, it, Yeah. And it you would know, be all the time. And that's the thing. I'm sure that day. people, we, we were up there and we came across uh, a, a group of elk. Um, I don't know, a flock of elk, whatever they are. Biggest assholes you're ever going to run across. <laughs> Coming across the road. And <clears throat> they were, we, we were just amazed because one of them was like challenging a car because like it didn't like, it, and we were, everyone was out of their cars taking pictures. I'm sure the locals are like, oh, goddamn elk back up again. Like it's, it's not novel at some point, you know, it just becomes that, you know, ho hum. It's just the doldrum mm-hmm. of daily life that you're, that you're living. And it's like, yeah. oh God, you know. <clears throat> the oh the the water's freezing that or the water is the lake is is thawing that means that everyone is going to be visiting now and yeah. you just get pissed about the tourists coming to your location yeah so. because then because also in space like that with wild animals people are like oh my people are so dumb with animals yes. in general people are dumb with their own dogs let alone animals right. that they don't know anything about um, I saw a video of this this couple they were like there was a moose or something and they they had their dog off leash. It was like bouncing around this thing, like barking at it. And a local was driving by. They're like, hey, uh, your dog's going to get killed here if you're not careful. They're like, what? It's no big deal. It's like, no, that thing will stomp the shit out of your dog. Like, right. you need to get it out of there right now. That That is a huge fucking creature. It will yeah. annihilate your dog. Like, it's just yeah. a moose. It's like, you don't understand anything about this creature. <laughs> so you should, first of all, have your dog on a leash. Second of all, get the fuck out of there. Do you love right. your dog? Then fucking protect it because that that's not good. <laughs> this animal, there's no there's no logic or reasoning with. No. Hey, this is just a dog. It's not a threat to you. This animal just sees. Well, this thing is being aggressive towards me. I better neutralize the threat. That's the same person that's like, I could probably choke out a giraffe. And you're or, like, I'm right. sorry. I could I'm box sorry, a kangaroo. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I could wrestle a wolf into submission. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've okay. seen people wrestle alligators. Can't be that hard. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just untested. Just like, right. you know. You just got to cover their eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they don't know where they is. This is like anyone talking like, you know, weighing in on anything expertise on the internet they're like well i think you should just do this what's your expertise in this zero okay right. well it's, i'm gonna file your opinion under nobody cares right you know it's the same as like when someone says chipping away something is you know better than pouring yeah loose concrete Look, i'm yeah, guessing but. i'm guessing <laughs> i'm giving it a shot don't know and structural engineers out there fucking light me up if you yeah. if you if you know better i Please prove me wrong. I'm guessing. All right. We're, I have hey, no idea. where can they where can they come at you, Doug? The, all of our social media is at MindGap Podcast. Uh, hit up our Discord link is in the description. You know, f- head over to the general podcast discussion and be like, Hey, Doug, you said this about uh, structural engineering. I have I have I have some expertise to lend thoughts. to that. That would that would be great. That would be great if you could just you could do that. Uh, leave us a comment right here on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. Like and subscribe while you're there if you feel so compelled. Which, by the way, I want to take a moment. Uh, over the last two weeks, there was a surge of subscribers. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and anyone who just recently subscribed. Like, seriously, thank you. Like, we kind of go through these, like... <laughs> bursts and i'm always like what the fuck like within a matter of days like we just saw like 15 to 20 people subscribe to us so thank you awesome thank you very much thank you genuinely thank you we're welcome we're glad you're here uh we love we love having new people as be part of the family so thank you very much for that uh speaking of i also host a video game live stream on fridays at 8 p.m central uh the last two weeks andy america was kind enough to stop by if you're not sure who andy is he's a buddy of mine uh, who steps in to help stream sometimes, and he was streaming Hell Divers Two, which was a lot of fun. Noah was playing, and uh, Wolf joined us last week as well. We were fighting some Terminators and killing some bugs and spreading democracy and liberty wherever we went. It was great. It's very very fun. So um, we might be I playing that again this week, or there was another game that uh, Noah found that was f- free today. Uh, that looks like it's a very unique game where uh, it's called. Oh, what's it called? Stand by. I need to uh, need to look this up again real quick because it was such a unique concept. Uh, I'll say that last week I tuned in just for a, a brief minute, or two weeks ago I tuned in for just a brief minute, and uh, I was very pleased pleased as punch, as you might say, to see the shirtless wonder Andy America hosting the yeah. hosting the stream. It was very nice to Andy see. Andy America is he's, he's a good dude, he's a, man. He's he's a mensch. Yeah, he really is. So it's this game called Content Warning. And the synopsis says, get famous or die trying. Content Warning is a co-op horror game where you film spooky stuff with your friends to try and go viral. Squat up, (laughs) customize your face, uh, buy some gear, and use the diving bell to go down to the old world. Down there, you'll encounter scary physics, animated monsters, cursed relics, and other things. So, uh, looks like an interesting thing. I think we'll give it a try. So, that might be this this Friday's uh, Friday's jam. So, anyway. I like it. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm always looking to try out these new fun indie games. Even if it's just a one-off, it's always fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah baby. Absolutely. All right. It's time to pay the corporate uh, the corporate tax. That's right. It's time you to pay. One do... of them old ad reads. Are you sick and tired of your socks disappearing when you go to wash them? Well, desperate homemaker, worry not. We have just the thing. Introducing Find My Sock Phone. This tiny little fully functioning cell phone is just small enough for your sock. Get your socks addicted to the dopamine rush of TikTok or the rage bait of Reddit and Twitter. So when your socks get lost, all you have to do is engage the Find My Sock Phone app, which will ping your socks little phone. Each Find My Sock phone is only $199. And when you buy two, you get the second one half off. Find My Sock Phone requires a service plan incompatible with AT&T. Ah, Justin, Yo. I have been so excited to talk to you about uh, this because we talked about this movie a while back, hmm. and that was Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Um, yes, we did. Because that's when Winnie the Pooh went into the public domain. And uh, the day that it like went into public domain, or shortly thereafter, they released uh, some film lovers got together and made a slasher film based on the concept of Winnie the Pooh uh, being in 
a horror film. Now, uh, that movie was greatly panned by critics. Um, as it, it, honestly, it looked like, and we talked about this when it came out. I was like, I, am I supposed to believe that that's really Winnie the Pooh? Or is it a, just a guy in a mask? Because it looks right. like a guy in the mask. And I understand horror films and new films, they're made on the cheap or whatever and, and stuff like that. But, you know, and, and people seem to really be capitalizing on the, hey, this thing's in public domain. Let's make something scary out of it. Because most of the time that stuff was made for kids or whatever. And they're like, let's go in the right. complete opposite direction. Also, um, horror, yeah. from a financial standpoint, horror is one of the top selling genres. You can make a cheap horror film and have it go absolutely viral and make a shit ton of money way easier than the majority of other genres that are out there. We've yes. seen it happen time and time again with Blair Witch and with Insidious and with, you know, like, you know, you just go down the list and name all these things that were made on the, the first one was made in the cheap studio system, picked it up and then it started growing as a franchise from there. So it makes sense to give this a shot. You don't know, yeah. you know, yeah, and I'm not here to, to shit on anyone's ideas with this sort of stuff. The only thing I ever look for with things like this is I just want to see a good story told. Like, 100%. I want, I want to see something interesting. I don't give a shit if it's made for 500 bucks or whatever. Like, if you're telling a good, fun, interesting story, I'm all in, man. Like, yes. I, 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 don't, I don't care. Um, but that first movie, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, um, got some of the worst reviews of 2023. Um, but it got a bunch of publicity. <clears throat> And it generated a decent amount of money at the box office. So um, they just recently, the same filmmakers, released uh, Blood and Honey 2. I just uh, saw this. Um, and so now, after this, which a friend of the pod, Jamie Jirak, actually was interviewing one of the creators of Blood and Honey 2, which was great. Really? So oh, amazing. If, uh, Jamie, Jamie Jiraka works uh, with comicbook.com, and she interviews all sorts of filmmakers and stuff, and she does like the pressers for upcoming stuff, and I saw her interviewing them. Uh, so they have the second movie, which I think came out uh, March 26th, I believe. That is correct. So that just, you know, as of recording, that has already come out. Um, and so apparently the filmmakers are planning their own universe of... Uh, uh, creepy versions of these characters, and they're calling it the Twisted Childhood Universe, but the unofficial name is known as the Pooniverse, as in Winnie the Pooniverse. Which, um, yeah. look, if you just said, hey, have you seen any of the films inside the Pooniverse? That could go one of two ways. Yeah, it's very true. You, well, you gotta, you're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. <laughs> right. And part of the, what they are are planning to do is they're doing a dark version of Bambi. It's called Bambi the Reckoning. They're doing Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare and Pinocchio Unstrung. Here's the but, thing. I'll say this. Peter Pan's the Peter what was it again? Peter Pan Hold on. The Neverland Nightmare. Yes, Neverland Nightmare and Pinocchio Unstrung. Bambi the Reckoning okay. Peter Pan Neverland Nightmare, you could have some fun with that and mm -hmm. Pinocchio Unstrung is just a great title. Like, yeah. that's a cool title. I really, really like that. And they said they also want to do some other creepy versions, ranging from Sleepy Beauty to The Mad Hatter. So they have big ideas for the stuff. So while I'm not thrilled of another idea of a shared... And apparently part of this is like all of these creatures are going to come together in... Uh, it's the Pooniverse, Monsters Assemble in 2025. Which means that all these films are going to be coming out before 2025, and you know. So they're okay. So here's the thing: it's in in a kind of an ironic twist or a coincidental twist. Uh, the Pooniverse, which sounds like a porn film universe, these films are being made on the same production schedule as those films would be made as well. Yeah, that's kind of that's. This kind is of like cool. this is like Phase Three level like right. schedule <laughs> yeah. release. You know, this like, is what. Here's the thing: unfortunately, this is what DC tried. Yeah, and they failed. So I'm hoping that the Pooniverse can capitalize on this. Well, what I'll say is, and what I, I want, what I kind of want to put the question to you, uh, yeah, is like, um, is there? Because right now this is like the rage, like the same thing with Steamboat Willie. There's a slasher film made yeah. with Steamboat Willie, which looks just like Winnie the Pooh, you know, Blood and Honey. Where I'm like, that's not Steamboat Willie. That's a guy in a mask. And there's also a video game version of Steamboat Willie that looks like a horror thing okay. as well um w is there a property that you would like to see get done in this fashion that you think would be really cool 
to tell like a story. I personally think Pinocchio is a really fertile area for some scary stuff because if you think about what Pinocchio is, absolutely, Pinocchio is a is is a wooden doll that's given life by yeah. a magical Magic? creature. Yeah, and and a guy who desperately wants a child. He makes these puppets, and the blue fairy is like, "Here you go. Here's life." And this life form has no idea what the world is around him. He doesn't understand right from wrong. So there's a cricket that is his conscience and tries to teach him what's right and wrong. Even the movie, the Disney movie by itself, it's kind of like, whoa, like there's a lot of shit going on. Like kids are smoking cigars and they're turning into donkeys and there's a giant fucking whale. And like, it's wild. It's a wild ass movie. But I've seen like a couple shorts like I saw like this was like I don't know a minute and a half animated video of this Pinocchio who's been turned into turned to life and he's like trying to eat Geppetto and it's absolutely terrifying <laughs> that's because awesome. it's like the whole concept of always like father I'm hungry why did you make me it's absolutely terrifying and Geppetto's like locking it himself in, to his, live. in his workshop and he's breathing heavy you just like see this Pinocchio monster is terrifying and there was other like this animated voiceovers that were kind of funny but they were also terrifying and like Jiminy Cricket was like hey Pinocchio you have to stop pointing at people like you can't point at disabled people and just like point he's like well I didn't know what they were he goes you just stared at them and pointed like you can't do that like you know just it was it was funny but then like there was other ones where eventually Pinocchio kills Jiminy Cricket like because he doesn't the idea of this sentient thing yes that doesn't know right from wrong that all of a sudden doesn't have a conscience it's you know sociopathic psychopathic whatever doesn't understand oh when I break someone's arm that's hurting something doesn't understand that's terrifying oh, and yeah. <clears throat> especially if they go and experience the world you know, like they get mistreated in a way and they certainly don't trust other people and then just do whatever it is that they do with without any sort of conscience whatsoever. I think that's a fun concept to play with. Like that yes. would be absolutely terrifying to go down that 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 path and see what comes out the other end. I think that's really, really cool to explore that. So I would love to see an interesting thing. And yeah, sure. It could be slasher isk to some to some degree, but I would love to explore that concept of almost an alien creature who's been given sentience that doesn't naturally have sentience, that's in an unnatural body, right? It's a wooden toy that is trying to understand its place in the world, doesn't like it, doesn't understand it, so lashes out, doesn't understand its emotions. That's fucking yeah. terrifying. Like yeah. oh, absolutely. absolutely terrifying. There's there's a um, <clears throat> I wish I could remember uh, the name of it or I wish I could remember like the plot a little bit better but there was a short film that I saw a couple years ago about um, a an a, an AI robot oh that we watched up, this at, at a Simon did desk we, did we watch this that yeah. ended up like it was kidnapping and performing surgeries on humans. And it was it wasn't being done with and it was killing them, but it wasn't being done with malicious intent. It was being done because it didn't understand, like it was it was looking for the human's circuit board or to like it, there was a misunderstanding and it would, thought it was doing something good and it couldn't understand why the humans kept kept dying. And it was but again that concept of like something that doesn't know what it is and what its surroundings are is fucking it is a fucking terrifying. And it's a thing that has more power than you. That is a terrifying... This short is called Abe. How did you find it? I just typed in robot horror short, and it's the first thing that popped up. I Uh, did see. I did too much. I uh, said short indie film of a robot performing surgery on humans. Yeah. Uh, It's called Abe. You can find it on YouTube. Um, It's uh, by Rob McClellan, um, and uh, it is... Yes, this is it. Terrifying. Uh, A software... A self-aware robot seeks out love... And meaning with horrifying results. Yep. Yeah. So this is a an entity that has a different moral code than other humans. And it doesn't understand. He thinks that like his insides are what makes him tick. So he's trying to cut open people to find where the love is. And it's right. 
horrifying concept as he does these sorts of things. He's like, where is the love? You know, like, yeah, but not it's, like, yeah, where it's, it's is all... the love? He's like, it's in here. <laughs> you know, like. But again, not being done like, I'm going to gut you and find the love. It's just like, where is the love? It's, cl- it's a clinical yeah. approach to it, which is Us. absolutely horrifying. Like, yeah, man. That is, yeah, because we can't relate to that. We don't understand it. Right. And if you try to empathize with that too, that thing also doesn't understand you or right. the humans or what makes them, you know, imagine something that sees the cruelty of humans, right? Mm-hmm. And is exposed to that and doesn't understand it, doesn't like it, and then just kind of goes off the deep end. It's I just recently rewatched Ex Machina, you know, similar thing of one of my favorite I love that right? film so much. So fucking good. So and good. you know, uh, that movie, if you haven't seen it, A twenty four film. No dogs in it, so you're safe. Um, <laughs> uh, essentially, uh, a young programmer goes to some very rich developers like home for a couple days to do a Turing test on an AI that this guy has created, and it's a legit like AI. And a and humanoid and a body, humanoid and, body yeah. and everything like that. And you're just trying to figure out, is this thing real? How, like, how's it like, what, what's it all about? And it's, it's absolutely fascinating Who, because who's pulling the strings on who is really, right. Yeah. And the idea of, you know, if you are able to create something that has a conscious self <laughs> that doesn't necessarily need to sleep, eat or whatever, but then you just lock it away. Right. Is that Okay. <laughs> Is right? It not is it techni- It's not technically human. Like it right. asks a lot of great questions and explores a lot of that stuff. I would love to see that in a Pinocchio. Now, granted, I'm assuming that what these guys do will probably be more slasher oriented in that regard. But um, I loved taking those concepts and exploring it. You know, yeah, um, I agree. Peter Pan, a dark version of Peter Pan. Like, well, and that was going to be one of the ones that to answer your question was yeah. was that I thought I I think that one is going to be fucking incredible because. You've got an island of children, lost children. And how fun would it be if, again, like if Wendy or maybe the parents make their way there to try to save Wendy, <clears throat> how fun would it be to make Captain Hook the actually the good guy? And he's like, no, you don't understand. These kids are fucking nuts. <laughs> like, yeah, because yeah, I maybe. have been trying to get off this fucking island my, out of Never Neverland myself. These kids are insane. Yeah. It's like, you know, Lord of the Flies kind of shit. Yes, with exactly. Them. And they bolster their numbers by actually stealing kids, bringing them to Neverland, and they, right. over time, they brainwash them and they become part of the Lost Boys. And yeah, you, you see the pirates, like whoever it is, like goes to Neverland, you see pirates like brutally attacking these children, and you're like, these are the bad guys. And like you said, Captain Hook's like, look what they did to me. Right. This is. You don't understand. These kids are the bad ones. And over time, you realize just how to pray. Peter Pan is just some kid who's just yeah. went off the deep end and can fucking fly. He's written and, a manifesto. Right. Like, it's, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a, I had never considered it. It'd be fun to go through some of like the classic stories like that and you know, well, go through the Disney catalog. And again, not just make it like, how can we turn this into a slasher? But like, how can you turn this on itself? Like in a dark way. Right. Like, I mean, I think of Aladdin, right? Sure. You meet the genie. Here's this happy-go-lucky guy. I think a dark twist on that would be the genie who's been trapped in this fucking, like, fucking lamp for eons has to hate people because he's Mm -hmm. always serving them. He's stuck in this thing. He has this immense power that he can't use without a master. He is a slave to whoever does this. And they're always like, I want a lot of money. I want power. And he has to grant him. Imagine if like somehow he finds a way to get out. Like, I don't know. Like his whole thing is like, he's manipulating people to get the upper hand or whatever, or just, you know, I don't know. Like he, that would be a situation where that genie's not going to be not going to be a, th- a happy to see someone. He's like, "Oh, great. Someone else has touched the <clears throat> lamp, and now right. I have to do your fucking bidding, you know." And they don't treat him well, and he's just doing all this sort of stuff. He doesn't understand well, um, humans, you know. Imagine some of the horror horrific wishes that he's had to grant. Yeah. Right, or not he, even just like he he's, tries like, to find ways around to like make almost like a monkey paw situation. Like you wish for something and he turns it dark because he's tired of he like he yeah. wants to see people suffer with it and yeah yeah like just that'd be that'd be that interesting. Could be interesting. Yeah, the other it, one that I thought uh, again <clears throat> would be 
And I don't know how you turn it on. I don't know how you, the only way I can con, I can conceive of it is horror. And someone actually cut a trailer, a fake trailer of this movie in the horror fashion was Mary Poppins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've Would be another that. one. This woman floats in, infiltrates this family, starts driving, like, starts, am I seeing what I'm seeing? You know, like, what, wait, is that, hold on. What are you giving them? Is that yeah. sugar? A spoonful of medicine? What is the medicine? Like yeah. it could it just gets into a dark yeah. You had them on rooftops? Like <laughs> they're dancing with animated penguins? Right. What's going on here? Who's this Just, chimney sweep you're bringing yeah. around? Who's this fucking deadbeat, you know? <laughs> yeah. What the hell's going on here? But yeah, like um, I just, just it could be a very omeny type uh, you know, horror I, property. It, it, and this is again going back to that wonderful comic series Fables um or Fable um, you know, they take some very adult looks at some of the classic things like Snow White was not a happy oh, tale. There you go. Snow no. White was abducted by the dwarves and kidnapped and tortured uh, Mm -hmm. in unsavory ways by these dwarves. And in that story, um, she escapes and she goes back and she murders all of them. Like, because it was some horrific shit. And it was one of those things where it's like, man, these dwarves were were horribly murdered and no one knows what happened. You realize it was Snow White who went back and took, took justice into her own hands and things like that. So, um, you know, finding unique ways to, cause that's, that's interesting, right? That's an interesting take on it. It's like, oh yeah, everyone thinks this is just this great thing that these guys were helping me. She's like, they weren't, Yeah, they were not good. They were not good <clears throat> creatures and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love just to see some more creative ways to go about it again. Hey, I'll, I'll powder these guys, uh, taking this into their own hands and, and giving it a try. It sounds like they're having fun doing it. So, well, and like, that's the thing, like it, it, it's. You know, it's in public domain. They're not hurting anyone. Like yeah. it is what it is. Like let them fucking rock and roll. The first one I just looked was made for fifty thousand. Yeah. It made five point two million in the box office. That's a tidy little profit. Right. Second one was made. Uh, it said ten times as much, so five hundred thousand. If it does the same, it's trending higher on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. If Currently, it does, if it does the same as the first three. one, guess what? Still yeah. a nice little profit. Like, it's a tiny <laughs> little profit. Yeah. So yeah. look, fucking rock and roll. Like the more, yeah. the more you, the more you freak people out like this and be like, what is this? Like, you've got a viral marketing already. So don't yeah. like go nuts for donuts. I say. Yeah. There's no, there's no hate here for me. I, I, you know, I think five, six years ago, I probably would have hated on these guys. Yeah. Just being like, oh, what the hey. fuck? Just, I, but I'm like, hey, go have fun, man. Like, do make I? Shit. Do I like? Am I going to endorse the movie or be like, this is a good movie? Probably not. Am I going to watch not, it? Probably not. Right. You know? But I'm not against the movie, but per se. No. Exactly. Yeah. No, I I, um, I appreciate this. I think <clears throat> what's already wearing thin on people is they're like, hey, here's this thing in public domain. It's like, guess what? There's a slasher version of it. Horror. It's like, yeah. That's, people are like, God, can we do anything else other than... Right. I was like, listen, what's the other option? Do you want to go like sexual with it? Because I'd prefer we don't go that route. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, what about what about a, a, a you know a, a like a period drama piece? Like, what about like making a Steamboat you know? Willie? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, uh, I because because honestly, that's the easiest way to go, right? What's the polar opposite of a child's tale? It's a horror. Exactly. Movie, you know, like so, it makes sense to wander down that road and and see right. see what comes out the other end. <clears throat> uh, but it's again, like finding I would complementary love... colors. What's on the opposite of the genre mm-hmm. wheel? You know exactly. Yeah, you yeah. just you, you try to find it. So I I just hope that there are um, I don't know. I'd love to see some people explore some of those things. I don't mind getting dark with that stuff. I I love a creative take on something yeah. and finding a way Absolutely. to uh, really just you know go wild with it. Like I'm all for it. So yeah, let us know. Let us know what you think would be a spooky take on some of these properties and what what would you do. If you had the uh, the ability to uh, be creative with this, let us know. Let us know in those I comments. Was, I was looking at just the list of Disney of Disney stuff. Yeah, and uh, I didn't realize they did. They were behind uh, Roger Rabbit. Oh, and I was like, that movie is bonkers That's to right. begin with. Yeah, we like, watched that you, not that long ago with Natalie, and I was like, yeah. this is kind of like a serious noir film. <laughs> it's but it's a weird t- tone that they tow in that in that movie. How, yeah. So again, like, what would the what would the opposite of that be? Would you go horror and just make it even more because the guy's face melts off? Well, not like that. It's like it's implied that there's like sexual relations with tunes, you know. But this they're playing like, patty cake. Right. They're literally just playing patty cake. But like, you know, right. Jessica Rabbit's like moaning as if she's like 
getting it on. This was a PG movie. You know what I mean? I know, like, man. He's dipping. Yeah, he's dipping characters in acid and like, like yeah. let's talk about a horrific death. Like, Jesus not only like that, Christ. it's like there's like things like there's a will that contractually obligates who can build a highway. I'm like, what are we doing? This is like Trade Federation shit in like episode one of Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I appreciate it. I appreciate it saying? because because it's like a true noir, right? You got this, it, it this is, yeah. down and out detective who's trying to figure out what's going on. His brother was killed by a tune, so he hates <laughs> tunes. And there's a great arc with him and what he's trying to do. But they're like, man, this tram company just got bought up and they're putting people out of business because this guy's buying up all the real estate. And I'm like... <laughs> Really? Is that what we're You're doing? You're expecting who's the target audience? You're expecting right? children to understand the concepts, the nuanced concepts. Yeah. Of you got uh, yeah. you got you got a fucking like uh, cartoon of rabbit that's holding a pulling guns on people. You know, it's like please uh, don't move, stick them up. You know, you got a fucking a baby that's smoking a cigar that talks with a New York baby. accent. You know, is it Danny DeVito? Is I don't think it? that was Danny DeVito. I could be oh, wrong. I don't God. know. But it was like, you know, it, it was all sorts of stuff. It was wild, man. That was a wild movie. I remember watching that with Natalie. I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, it's 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 crazy. You know, it's a crazy film. So, yeah, that was, uh, we just go super noir with it. You know? Right? <laughs> just wild shit, man. Absolute uh, wild shit. I'm dying to know who this, who was the baby? Oh, was it Bob Hoskins? No, no, he was the detective. Bob Hoskins was the, yeah, was the, the, the detective. The actual, yeah. yeah. Ah, we'll have to come back to this. I don't know. I won't be able yeah. to find it now, but yeah. Yeah. That was... Hey, look, if you know, let us know in Discord. <laughs> yeah. Let's send us a message and let us or know. Or in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the fucking comments. Let Tell us, us how... know. Tell us how dumb we are that we can't figure this out. Tell us how fucking stupid we are. Uh, speaking of noir, real quick, I watched um, another A24 movie recently called Under the Silver Lake. Have you watched that? Under the Silver Lake? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Um, Weird movie. <laughs> One of the many Wait, movies that, I watched. That doesn't surprise me. On on my spring break. Um, it was what I've enjoyed yeah, about yeah. going on this A24 run is just like, I just look at like the, uh, the cover art for the film. I'm like, eh, let's give this a try. And I did yeah. it. And I'm like, oh, what do you know? Andrew Garfield is the lead in this movie. Cool. Didn't know that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, cool. Interesting. And uh, it's like a neo noir film. Grace. Topher Grace is in it for a little bit. Um, and <laughs> it is, it was so compelling. Like I stayed up late to finish it. Okay. But it definitely had one of those endings where I'm like, all right, I need someone to explain this to me. Cause I feel like, I feel like I missed the point of it. Um, it's I weird. have to join you on this, on this journey. I know they have that section on max right now that mm -hmm. you're, that you're using yeah. as a, as, as a yeah, collection. I, I have to, I got to jump in because I, look, I love a 24 and I want to talk to you about all these films, man. Um, yeah, I, I'm talking about it now. Cause I don't know if it's one I'd recommend. Um, okay. I think it's an enjoyable experience, but as far as like, what the fuck am I? What the hell is going on with all this? Um, yeah, it was definitely like after I read the explanation for it, I'm like, okay, okay, all right, I'm 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 here for you. It. Think you just, I think I'm there. I'm like, because it basically the 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 whole con the, the the rough plot of this is uh, Andrew Garfield kind of plays this like <laughs> piece of this is practical dog for you, like <laughs> so he's he's like a down and out actor. And right away, you learn that, like, he has five days to pay his rent or he's okay. going to get evicted. And as the movie's going on, I'm sitting there being like, how many days is left? Because he's not making any progress. Like, he's going out to bars. He's 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 spending money at bars. Like, he's buying yeah. food. He's got, like, a car. And I'm sitting there being like, dude, what are you doing with all this? Like, your rent's due. And I'm getting super fucking stressed out. I'm like, is he going to be able to pay his rent? Like, what's going that's, on that, here? Like, forget whatever the plot of the movie is. You're like, that's what's stressing you out is, is he going to, will he, won't he be able to pay his rent? I'm sitting like, dude, you can't go out to the bar and buy drinks. You got to pay your fucking rent, man. Like, this is no <laughs> joke. Like, I was getting super stressed out. But he's kind of a deadbeat. And uh, he's kind of a creep. Um, but he meets this woman in his apartment complex and just, like, kind of falls for her. And they have sort of, like, a seductive encounter like nothing like too salacious or whatever but you know um you know they they're kind of like hanging out and then they kind of get interrupted she's like come you know come by to hang out with me tomorrow and he's like okay 
And then he comes back the next day and like all the stuff's moved out of the apartment. And he basically tries to track down this girl. Like he's just trying to find out where she is. And it turns into this sort of like mystery. Mm. And it's interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting, very compelling. Um, there's a lot of threads. There's this, and it's, you're, it's one of those things where you're like, God, I hope this pays off, you know, because <laughs> we're going down some weird spots, you know, that, right, that's right. always, always my thing when I'm watching something that has a compelling story, but it's like, there's a mystery and this mystery, it's, I, I call it the lost <laughs> syndrome, like yeah, lost it's... really strung you along. And it's like one of the rules of improv is like, don't string the audience along. Just say, they say what's in the box. The idea being like, if you have a box right. and you're like, hey guys, I got this box, fucking open up the box and let everyone know what's in it. Because the more you right don't away. talk about what's in the box, everyone's like, what's in the fucking box? Right. And then people are trying to figure out what's in there, what's going on. And then when you tell what's in the box, it's not going to meet their expectations. Ever. And now the whole scene's been about what's in this box. And it's like, what's the payoff? It's not worth it. So it's the same thing with Lost where I'm like, we had fucking six <clears throat> seasons of like, what's going on with this fucking island, man? And you get to right. it and you're like, I don't know. Was it worth it? No. Um, <laughs> don't think so. Um, so like whenever you kind of I, I get movies like that. I also just recently watched uh, The Three Body Problem on Netflix. I Okay. Uh, yeah, that's. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I have now, thoughts. You, I, have, you, I have questions. Did you watch it? I, no. Oh, but okay. <laughs> what's your question? What is The Three Body Problem? It's a show on Netflix, and <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 an interesting show. Again, I don't know if it's one I'd recommend because it, it's after the first ep- episode, it goes this season on three body problem. Like, oh fuck, they're not going to resolve. Wait, it did this. like a teaser. Yeah, it was like this. Season, I was like, oh, so we're not gonna we're not gonna figure out what's That's going like on here. Old are we? network shit. I was like, oh shit. And the funniest thing about that was, um, I had watched. Um, like most of like an episode, and I was like, "Oh, I'll finish this up in the morning." Like, like while I'm stretching, and then I'll go on to the next episode. And there was like seven minutes left of yeah. the episode. You know, three or four of it was the episode that goes to credits, and like that was the end of the season, and I didn't even know it. So like, I really just should have sat down and spent five minutes finishing it out and been like, "Oh, that was it." So I'm like all excited. I get ready to stretch, and I'm watching it. It's like, all right, what's the next episode? And I'm like, why is the next episode not coming up? I'm like, fuck. I just should have finished this last night. It was five minutes. God damn it. Um, essentially, it's it's a sci-fi movie um, yeah. about uh, scientists that start seeing weird shit in the world, uh, and they can't explain it, and they're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, and um, I did enjoy it because it took some turns I didn't expect, um, okay. and you do figure out what's quote unquote going on. Um, And it seems like a lot of what will be coming is like, what do they do about it? Which I thought was an interesting turn. They didn't string you along forever. Like what's going on about halfway through you figure out, Oh, this is what, this is what this is. Okay. And uh, at one point the Fermi paradox is mentioned. And I was like, Justin, I love the Fermi paradox. Um, We've talked about that a lot. And I don't know. I I think it it might, I don't know if I would throw it up in our recommendation section, but uh, I I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say, I'd say it's I fully. In, it's, I fully it's, it's, it's eight it. episodes. It's eight yeah. episodes, so it's not a huge commitment. So just know that inten- it's a season one of who knows how many. So yeah, do you, like be cautious because do you want to get it? But with Netflix, who knows? Mid season two, they may just be like, we're done. Yeah, that's also the point. So I'm like, you know, yeah. whatever, do what you're gonna do. So yeah, yeah. Meh. Anyway, Meh. so Meh. fun Meh. little things I've been watching. Pew, 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 pew. But. Uh, uh, I'm so excited for what we're going to wrap up with here. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, Justin and I love, I love this new thing that we're doing, which is playing a game at the end of the show. And uh, we're coming up with new things all the time. Sometimes we go back to some, some stuff that we just enjoy. Like the AI stuff is always fun. Uh, this week, Justin made a great suggestion of basically we are going to describe the plot of a movie in five words or less. And the other person is going to have to guess what that movie is based on that limited information. Now, the challenge for us writing this is to give enough information so you can have a good guess, but not give away too much so you like know exactly what it is. Right. Like so, when I was talking with Doug earlier, I was like, hey, like if you're describing Lord of the Rings, are you using the word hobbit? Because 
that would give it no, away. Because right. hobbits only exist in the Lord of the Rings universe. Now, if you're trying to label like one of those particular fucking movies, you know, then that could sure. be a challenge. But you know it's Lord of the Rings. Right. To some degree. So um so I have six. Um, because I wasn't sure how quick this will go. Uh but so we 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 can we can kind of start with this. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh let's 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 let you kick it off. I okay. have four. Right. Um, I was going to do five, but then I'm like, well, I said two or three originally. Yeah. Um, All right. But yeah, I was like, so uh, we'll go somewhere in between. Okay. So right. my first one, man in hat punches Nazis. <laughs> I love it already. Man in hat punches Nazis. I tested these okay. all on Jill, by the way. She did didn't she do get them all? Well. No. She did not do it very well. She did not do it very man well. Man in hat punches. Oh, uh. Uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah! Yes! Bam, 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 bam. None in particular. It's just he's just punching Nazis. It's in most just of that's them. the dude who punches Nazis and he wears a hat. Yeah. I was like, if I say man with whip punches the Nazis, that's too much. But I'm like, man in no. hat. You know? I, there, look, because there's look, because now you got to go through all the Nazis. Like with the whip, you're like, I know what that is. But yeah. a lot of people wear hats. Yeah. But this, yeah. this distinguished hat, you know, it's like it's particular. You see that yep. hat, you're like, that's Indiana Jones, you know? That was a good. That was a good mix. Yeah. That was a good blend of words. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hit me. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to start off with what I believe is the easiest one, and we're okay. going to go. We'll get progressively harder. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and again, these were five words or less. So, mm-hmm. gorilla destroys city with rock. I want to say it, but I don't want to <laughs> say it. <laughs> I want to say it, but I don't want to say it. Is this Rampage? Because you know it now. <laughs> I was like, the rock. Uh, oh, it's, with rock. I was like, because yeah. I was thinking of a literal rock. I'm like, he's destroyed with and the rock. And that's why I, I like, chose it that way. This one went through uh, about 10 different iterations. And I was like, I need it to be, I need it to be just to a point where he might think it's something else. I was like, it's not King Kong. Nope. Um, I was like, this has got to be Rampage. It's got to be yeah. Rampage. All right, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, I, the first one was Muscle Man and Angry Gorilla. Like <laughs> I, I probably still would have gotten there because I'm like I fucking know yeah. what you tried to do here, but I like that. Yeah. I like that was a really good one. That was really really yeah. good. All right, here we go. All right, go ahead. Insomniac fights through his issues. Ooh, Insomniac fights through his issues. Okay, so it's a person who can't fall asleep, and he's troubled. He fights through his issues. Insomniac fights through his issues. Oh boy, this is a tough one. Okay. Insomniac fights through his issues. The Dark Knight. Batman. Nope. No. No. Nope. Is it, is it is it the character of Batman? No. Okay. I desperately want to do like, a Batman. There's... So many different. I'll tell you, there's Batman's no Batman living. in any of these, but I was like, it's too easy. I was like, okay. I'll be like, rich man does this. I was like, yeah. clown. Does, I was like, there's no way. There's no way okay. I can do it and, and not have you easily get it. So it's a good guess. Okay. Uh, and so, man, insomniac fights. So, okay, so who else doesn't sleep at night? <sighs> who else doesn't sleep? Insomniac fights through issues. Fuck. This is a, you know there's people a, listening or watching that are being like, I know what it is. Oh, they're screaming right yeah. now going, yeah. they're Yeah. yeah. And again- like we've said on other games, it's not easy when you're under pressure. Yeah. So fuck off. And if you know, if you know what these are, you yeah. put them in there. Put and put them in, them in there. Put them in the comments. Um, fuck. Okay. Um, you're going to say it. I'm going to get really pissed. Yeah, you and are. Soniac fights through issues. I give up. Fight Club. Oh, man. Oh, it's such a good one. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. I specifically want to put the word fight in there. Oh, So yes. that like, yep. you know. Man, nicely yeah. done. Thank well you. done on that one. Thank you. You get a round of applause. Thank That's you. a good one. Yeah, I know. Because I said to Jill, she goes, there's a movie called Insomnia, isn't there? I'm like, yeah, it's not that one. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whew, good job. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was going real like, yeah, like there's that Robin Williams film, Insomniac. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the fucking... Uh, Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> Immigrant reconnects with omnicidal daughter. With what? Omnicidal daughter. Omnicidal. I'm going to look up that word. Omnicidal. I'm hoping that Google search doesn't bring up the... I'm just going to look up omnicidal. <laughs> Omnicide. 
Merriam-Webster won't spoil it. Destruction of all life or human life? Is that is that Immigrant? what you meant? Immigrant, immigrant. Re- I did uh, look. I did some. I did a dictionary search on this. On this, immigrant reconnects with omnicidal daughter. Oh boy, I don't think I'm going to get this one. <laughs> omnicidal, omnicidal daughter. Who's a girl that's trying to destroy all life? Uh, omnicidal daughter. And again, this is one immigrant. where you're just like, yep. Yeah, the immigrant part is probably a good good clue. Immigrant. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I immigrant. know you've seen this. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure I have. Um, I went deep. I went be- deep back into our recommendations to make sure oh. that all the ones that I've said you've seen. Uh Wow, this sounds... I love this, and I love that I don't know what it is. Can you say immigrant? I was like, Godfather, damn. Uh, <laughs> no, because uh, the omnicidal daughter. That's The, the, that's the omnicidal yeah. part is like killing me because... No no pun intended. Yeah, right? Because it's, it's killing everybody. Um, <laughs> destruction of all life. Omnicidal daughter. What woman in film is trying to destroy all life? Um... Fuck me. I don't even know if I have any guesses. Um, if I'd swapped out the word omnicidal for nihilistic, would that help at all? Nihilistic, daughter. It doesn't help much either. It just doesn't give I a went, shit about I life. I went back and forth about the two because, yeah. Immigrant. Immigrant <laughs> connects with nihilistic or omnicidal daughter. Um, fuck, man. I don't know. I don't, give I don't it up? I'd give up. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Ah, Yeah. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Definitely was not on my radar. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. Could not. Some of the thing that sucks about this is like my brain gets stuck on one thing and it just won't go away. Absolutely. That's, I was like, yeah. what other things are related to Godfather? I'm like, it doesn't have to. It's not Godfather. It's like, yeah, but it no, out immigrant. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. It's like, okay. Well, it's funny because when you did the the previous one, the one that you mm-hmm. did, I, I said the Batman, but then I was like, okay, well, who else fights crime at night? I'm like, the Shadow, Darkwing Duck? And I'm like, <laughs> right. stop listing people who fight. Right. Stop yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you got? Okay. I'm trying to decide which one I have one <laughs> I want to do. I definitely want to do this one, so I'm going to say it. Uh, new pet hugs your face. Is it alien? <laughs> it is alien. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right that's a good one i, like I was like one. listen it's probably it's gonna give it away yeah. but i like it it's fun it was right. a fun one yeah well i'll wrap mine up then on this one which again i said we're going from easy to hard but i feel yeah. like that i feel like that last one i gave you was really hard this one i'm i'm a I, we'll see we'll find out you don't right? you don't know you like the know. hugging face gave yeah. it right away but right. yeah all right so <laughs> Again, I spent some time in the dictionary. Uh, <clears throat> Nona Janarian fights his best friend. Nona J- J- Janarian. Janarian. Being from 90 to 99 years old, is this Star Wars? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Have you heard the term octogenarian? That's yeah. someone in their 80s? Yeah. yeah. So th- for, for someone in their 90s, is Nona, Nona Janarian. Nona Janarian fights their best friend. Fights his best friend. Fights his best friend. <laughs> his best friend be his dog. <laughs> and he hugs his face. And it hugs his face. Yeah. It's an A24 film. <laughs> Nona Janarian fights his best friend. I was like, Obi-Wan Kenobi fighting Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Again, now you're stuck on the Star Wars right? track and you can't yeah. let go of it. Yeah. 90 year old. I really thought you would get this one. Fights his best friend. Thanks. Thanks for. You'll understand. <laughs> no, I, I I know I will, but now that I feel like I'm not going to get it, I'm like, great, <laughs> great. Uh, fights his best friend. Uh, ninety year old guy fights his best friend. Uh, my actually, my first thought was like, it's got to be a Clint Eastwood movie, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, like, it's not a bad guess. It's not know, a bad guess like, at he's all. He's an old yeah. guy. I was like, yeah. I haven't seen Gran Torino, but I don't think that's. <laughs> Does he got a friend in there? I, don't I was know. like, I don't know. I don't know if he likes the Koreans too much in that movie. Are the Koreans? I don't know. I'm I, assuming. 
It's anyone. It's anyone. <laughs> it doesn't like anyone. Get off my lawn. Yeah. Um, fuck. What are the ninety year old? Is this like, what's what's one? What's the one with like uh, Jack Lemon? He's like uh, what is grumpy it? old men. Grumpy old men. Is it grumpy That's- old men? <laughs> I had the thought. I'm like, that could be. It's so funny that we both went there, but it's not that one. I have no idea what this is. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Oh, well done. Well done. That's so good. That's so good. Um, all right. Um, I want to do two more for you. You want to do two? All right. Well, then I'll give you one more, too. But okay. Go ahead. All right. Because I, I, I I'm very happy with these. I don't know when we'll come back to this. All right. Um, <clears throat> good pilot destroys enemy base. Star Wars: A New Hope. Mm-mm. Good. Po- oh wait, uh, Top Gun: Maverick. There it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I'm like, they're the is same a good movie. It's the <laughs> same, same movie. Film. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's right, funny because I did that one to Jill. She hasn't seen Top Gun: Maverick. She goes, "Is that Star Wars?" I go, "That's what I want you to think." <laughs> exactly. It was. That's a, a great. A uh, very uh, so- solidified misdirect. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Uh, passive man terrorizes sleeping people. It's, it's not a movie, but Sandman? <laughs> is, it, is this a haiku? <laughs> what? Passive man terrorizes sleeping people. Um, I, oh, I feel like I should know this one. Passive man. It's not Nightmare on Elm Street because he's not a passive guy. Nope. Terrorizes. A lot of this. Oh, is- draw, uh, uh, the Nick Cage one. Uh, I fucking forget what it's called. It's uh, Dream Scenario. You got it. Yeah, Dream yeah. Scenario. Exactly. Nice. Yep. Good job. I was like, oh, this seems too I familiar. S- I haven't seen that one yet, but I, I again looking through our the recent, you know, I was like, oh, he said Dream nice. Scenario, and so I had to piece it together through the uh, I like write up about it. But yeah, I love it. All right, last one here. Here we go. This is the only one Jill got. Uh, Spaniard seeks revenge in sand. No country for old men? Nope. Span- Spaniard seeks revenge in sand. <laughs> the way you said in sand. In sand. In sand. The Spaniard seeks revenge in sand. It sounds like a really bad vocal warm up. The Spaniard <laughs> seeks revenge in sand. Revenge in sand. Desperado? Nope. Oh, man. That's the hint. thing with five with five words. Every word counts. And that's the thing. Yes. So like you've got to like dissect. You've got so few words to do this in. Yeah, you've got to specific. dissect it. Yeah. Because I also it's like you have to give them enough to head them in the right direction, but not give it away. Right. So okay, I'll so give you spe- a hint. I, this movie won an Oscar. Seeks revenge in sin. So I feel like there is a movie where they refer to the Spaniard, right? Like that's almost, is that? He's on, okay. he's on to something. He's on to something, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that was No Country for Old Men. Damn. Who is the Spaniard? Seeks revenge in sand. So it's desert. Someone's on the beach. Desert. Okay, so someone in the desert, Spaniard in the desert, seeking revenge. See, man, there's so many revenge films. There are. What's John Wick? <laughs> um, John Wick, final answer. All of them. <laughs> all of the John Wicks, yeah. Uh, I'm, it's going to be one of those where I'm going to be pissed. What is it? Uh, Gladiator. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, kudos to Jill. Yeah. Kudos to Jill. That, man, that... Yeah, Spaniard threw it. Yeah, it, it threw yeah. it off for me. I don't know why. Yeah, it, I know. Well, my, because, brain, my brain would yeah. not make that connection, you know? Because I was going to say Spaniard seeks revenge in arena, and I feel like that would have yeah. given it but, away, you mm, know? Man. So, you know, Whoa. it was like, that was fun, man. Well that was done. fun. That was I, cool. Uh, I like let that us one. know what you all think. If you, you know, let us know which ones you got and which ones you didn't. And I, yeah. I want to do that again. That was so much fun to make these, write these. Yeah. And, and I don't know, that was good. 
So well done, sir. Well done. All right, Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? Well, uh, in the uh, spirit of what we were talking about earlier about Pinocchio and the AI and everything, I'm going to recommend The Creator. Uh, came out last year, uh, nominated for some Oscar. I don't remember which one, but starring John David Washington, uh, Ken Watanabe, oh. um, uh, Gemma Chan, a, a bunch of the, the actors, Alice and Jenny, actors and actresses in this are just are, were phenomenal. Um, but basically, it's a uh, war breaks out between hu- humans create AI that becomes the thing that we fear. It's it's that self aware. Um, and it helps us. And then there is an attack on Los Angeles, a nuclear attack, and millions of humans die. And the AI gets blamed, and then a war breaks out between humans and AI. And John David Washington's character is hired to go in and take down this AI known as the Creator. And it's the AI that is spawning all of these other AIs. Um, And uh, craziness ensues. But it deals with a lot of really interesting issues that potentially we might have to look at in the future like do ai have rights and feelings and can they fall in love and if is it wrong to just turn them off or kill them like is are they robots or are they have they surpassed that and it's just a really it makes in the world that they set up it makes it very gray it's a very gray area and uh i i watched it i think i was coming back from uh, San Diego uh, when I was out there with Drew and I watched it on the plane and I'm like I need to watch this on a larger screen this deserves a larger screen because it's a it's a it, it's a good story great acting and the CG on it was really fucking good I was really enjoyed it so um, yeah directed by Hard- Gareth Edwards as well I like him as a director yeah absolutely I uh, he's, he's directed things such as uh, Rogue One Godzilla first Godzilla. and Monsters are probably the yeah. ones most known for very what cool. Is that? I don't remember monsters. Uh, Continent. I haven't seen it, but I, I, I definitely it was on my Middle list East to watch at some point in time. It looked very interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, anyways, yes. Uh, strong recommend. And yeah, if you like, uh, of course it's streaming words, then... on fucking Hulu, fucking Hulu. I wish I could give you, well, you wouldn't do it anyway. You're opposed I wouldn't. to that. Yeah. I'm lawful. Good. So, you know, what you want from me? <laughs> Doug, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to recommend uh, an A24 film. Uh, spoiler alert, the dog does die in this. Um, <laughs> not super graphically or whatever, but it, yeah, it, it happens. Uh, it's a A24 film called Skin. Um, I just was like, hey, let's watch this. Uh, had no idea until the end of the movie uh, that it was based on a real, uh, a real, real life thing. Mm. Uh, and essentially it's a kind of a guy that's down on his luck or whatever. He's part of a group of racist skinheads and uh, white supremacists. And he decides to try and leave. Uh, he finds someone that he loves. He's got like ridiculous tattoos all over his face, like and all over his body and stuff like that. And it's just a story of him trying to leave that life behind and him trying to have a quote unquote normal life. And I, I don't know. I found it really impactful. It was really, really cool. Um, the lead in it is Jamie bell. I think he's uh, for a second. I, he looks very similar to me to uh, Tom, uh, Tom Holland. So I was like, Oh, oh shit, okay. Tom Holland's in this, but it's actually Jamie bell. And Jamie Bell's like <laughs> fantastic. Like he's, he does such a good job in this. Um, I love it when like, UK people play like an incredibly good, just American, like not like that, yeah. but like, you know, it was, oh, it was really, really good. So a uh, great film, uh, pretty, it can be heavy at times, but like uh, a great story and I highly recommend it. So you can watch that on Max, up. I know. Jimmy Bell absolutely looks like, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. You'd be like, what? Cool. Yeah. And this is like his head shaved because he's a skinhead and stuff. I'm like, that's fucking Tom Holland. I didn't know he did this. And I'm like, oh, it's not him. Okay, never mind. But still, great, great film. Highly awesome. recommend it. You should check it out. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for, for uh, watching and listening this week. As always, check us out. Uh, YouTube.com slash podcast. Like and subscribe. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and who has continued to subscribe. We fucking love you. Thank you for all the support. We appreciate you. Um, <clears throat> Check the link in the description for a link to our Discord. Be part of our Discord family. Uh, check the links for our Patreon, for our merch, all that good stuff. And uh, be sure to uh, follow us on all our social medias at MindGap Podcast. Uh, and check out my video game live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. And check out Justin online as well. 
On Instagram, you can follow me at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on any platform where you can find podcasts. You will be able to find us. Like, subscribe, share, rate, review, all the things we ask you to do every week. But the big one, they're all big, but the biggest one is sharing. Let people know that we exist. Let people know that you listen to a wonderful podcast hosted by two uh, stately gentlemen and uh, that they should listen to. That goes a long way. Also, Two East Eighth on Instagram, twoeasteighth.com. Love and Improv Film on Instagram, loveandimprovfilm.com. Awesome. With that, I will say, uh, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week.